Hi everyone, welcome to your PD and this is Shubha. So as you all know that we are in IIT Kanpur and you can particularly see that I am in flight lab. So here I got a privilege to interact with head of the department of aerospace engineering and none other than Professor Gopal Kamath. Thank you for your time sir that you just agreed to be on our platform. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me here. Great. So sir, first we would like to you to please introduce yourself. Um, I'm Gopal Kamath, I'm a professor and uh, as you mentioned, uh, the head of the Department of Aerospace Engineering at IIT Kanpur. So I've been in IIT Kanpur since 2016. Great. Mm. So it's been almost eight years, sir. That's correct. So how has been your journey in IIT Kanpur? Oh, it's been great. Um, so I came from the industry. So um, IIT Kanpur welcomed me with open arms. It's been a great experience being in academic environment after being in the corporate world. So students would love to know that uh, was there a passion to be in this industry, in this aerospace engineering since the very start or it developed with the passage of time? Um, I think it as cliched as it might sound, but I think I was passionate about aerospace at least <laughs> from my school days and I, I was lucky enough to get admission in aerospace engineering in IIT Madras and that started the journey. So please tell us about your academic and research background. Okay. Um, so I did my Bachelor of B.Tech in Aerospace Engineering from IIT Madras. Then um, I went on to do my Master's and PhD in University of Maryland at College Park in the U.S. Right. Um, and then I came back to India. I worked for National Aerospace Laboratories in Bangalore. Then I moved to the corporate world. I worked for Tata Advanced Materials Limited, which is part of the Tata Group. I also worked for Tata Consultancy Services, which is again part of the Tata Group. And then I moved to Bombardier Aerospace in Bangalore again, and before moving to IIT Kanpur. So I've been in the aerospace field all through, and my research is in the area of um, aircraft health monitoring. And um, uh, yes, that's... Great. So I think that you have a massive exposure from multiple domains, right? And that has made you so much experienced and enriched in your career domain. So, sir, what kind of research facilities have been created in the field of your research particularly? So, yeah. the, since my area is in the, the domain of aircraft health monitoring, um, so there are two folds, right? Right from, so the way I describe my research is mm -hmm. to, so we are designing some kind of a smart device for the aircraft. Right. Um, so what we are basically trying to do is put sensors on the aircraft and uh, monitor how much of usage that it's having, whether it has undergone any damage, any kind of a um, you know, uh, defect in the aircraft. So for this, it's a very interdisciplinary uh, area. Mm -hmm. So you go all the way from um, developing or using sensors to collecting data and then processing data. And one of the things, as you can see in our background, we obviously, you if you really want this research to reach real world levels, you want to implement this in a real aircraft. And uh, so what we have done here is, you know, what were technologies that we are developing as part of our health monitoring? We try to implement this in on the aircraft, of course, with the, the blessings and the support of the regulatory agency like right. the DGCA. Right, right, right. Sir, you, I must say that you have an advanced infrastructure over here, but whenever a student wants to seek an admission in any institute, right, he always concentrates like what kind of an infrastructure that institute holds. So how would you rate the infrastructure facility of your organization in relatable to maybe any global institute? Right. So I think uh, let's start from home. Um, I think as you can see here, uh, this is a very, very unique facility. Right. Uh, definitely in academia, uh, this probably stands out to be very unique in the country. So IIT Kanpur, the flight lab is among um, the only few, not just uh, in the country, certainly in Asia and the world for sure. Great. I don't think any, too many universities even across the globe have this kind of a facility where we have aircraft, we have a runway, we have a traffic control system where you can actually fly an aircraft, test your um, whatever innovations you have on a flying platform. Great. And we are very fascinated that when we, we can fly on this boat right now. <laughs> okay. So, sir, how much focus students have on the research related to real world issues? Yeah. Like I said, um, 
today um, vehicle health monitoring it's not just with aircraft it is true for even cars automobiles right. and any systems whether even including machinery in an assembly line mm -hmm. require constant monitoring of its health um, because you want to detect any incipient failures because failures mean downtime means loss of revenue loss of customers so much of this health monitoring um, technology is as close to real world as you can imagine so this is some of these technologies are helpful for not just civilian airlines but also for military operators such as air force to determine how much of their aircraft has been used how much of life is remaining of the aircraft and so this this is a very practical and uh, system level problem that we are trying to address so there might be many students who want to be in this aerospace engineering and i must agree that there might be some probable research areas for the prospective researchers who want to carry their research so can you right. su just suggest a few of them right so so we are looking into um like if you are looking at structural health monitoring mm -hmm. you need to understand the behavior of the structure first and then you you will tend to use lot of sensors so you need to understand what kind of sensors like strain gauges fiber optic sensors you also need to understand the concept of uh, fatigue you need to understand the concept of fracture in an aircraft so these are some of the broad areas related to structural health monitoring so how come like there might be students who are focusing on the career opportunities which are available after a person suppose he does research in your domain what right. are the career opportunities available for him right um so i think uh, this kind of uh, areas is just although we are looking at uh, particular health monitoring but this involves multiple areas like including data collection data processing data analysis so we are looking at a specific application of trying to determine the health of the airplane but the the career opportunities are broader in terms of not only if you are looking at aircraft structural behavior you are looking at fatigue fracture um so this could be applicable not just in air, aerospace domain it could be applicable in automotive in many other areas as well and the allied areas of um coding data processing could be applicable to any domain for that matter not just restricted to aerospace there might be number of students who after this watching this video certainly would like to be a part of your mentorship so what are the key skills or i would say the three important skills that you look in a student before you just take him under your mentorship um so one um key area which i also try to um follow as much as possible is one should be Uh, a learner for life okay right. so one should be always curious always willing to learn uh, those are in my opinion if you have these qualities you can be a really good researcher so i don't know if that covers two so that <laughs> <laughs> so so it only has very you can say narrow listing areas yeah. right so if you want a third one then i would say of course you know um, you need to work very hard i believe hard work is an hard essential work, right? aspect of success yeah. so okay so now you told that what are the things you look for and what are the research career opportunities now if the students who want to join under your mentorship like what is the proper systematic procedure to be there um so it depends on whether you want to do your masters or uh, phd mm -hmm. so each of if you are doing your masters uh, we typically uh, look for um, exam i mean uh, gate exam score mm -hmm. so you either join and this is true for IIT Kanpur at large so you typically take your gate exam um and if you have a masters already and you're looking for phd then you apply through our portal you apply for a phd and we have a return test interviews and so on and based on that we decide through the process whether you know uh, the eligibility and the admission requirements are Uh, evaluated so beforehand any of the message you would like to share with the students because it was a very you can say sweet short concise precise i would say every good word for this interaction and it was a holistic in every way so please go ahead with some kind of you can say the words or some message you want to share with our viewers yeah i i think um i think if you want to work with the the best aerospace engineering department in the country and probably among many in the world i think iit kanpur is is in my opinion among the best uh, aerospace engineering departments 
and having been in different IIT campuses, I think even in terms of the the life that is there in this campus, a beautiful campus, uh, lovely facilities just outside academia as well, in terms of sports, in terms of other uh, you know interests that you might have. Um, so I think it's a great place to be and. Uh, so prepare hard for this. <laughs> uh, yes, and uh, be prepared to work hard even after coming here, in spite of you know. Be a uh, regular earner. <laughs> right, right. Okay, thank you so much, sir, for yeah. your time. Thank you for having me here. <laughs>